everyone. Welcome to our channel, Rebecca Stew in the Crew. I'm Rebecca. Today we have some Dollar Tree DIYs for you guys using items from the Dollar Tree. We're going to be making three different projects. So let's go over the supplies for our first one. The supplies we're going to need to make this one will be a mason jar. They come in two different sizes from Dollar Tree. We're also going to need some of the rug underlayment like non-slip mat, some faux leather from Dollar Tree. They come in three different colors, brown, white, and blue. We're also going to need some seashells and either one of these little votives and a candle, which is optional. You don't need those. And you could also use a battery operated light. We'll need some um, hot glue, some jute twine, some scissors. And then we're also going to be using a ruler. And then we'll need something to write with. Some brads or thumbtacks. You could even use stickers if you like. A um, rubber band. And then we'll need some sand to fill the jars. And we'll be using some dark blue paint and a paintbrush. So let's get crafty. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our jar and lay it on top of the rug non-slip mat. And we're going to just roll it around the jar to make sure that it's going to fit. And then we'll mark it with our marker with a little bit of overlap to make sure we have enough to get all the way around the jar without running out as we're gluing it on. So you want to make sure you cut it just a little bit larger than what you think you're going to need. Once you have that cut down to size, you're going to take some hot glue and you're going to start at the top of the jar and just add a little bit of glue. We're going to work in very small sections because the glass is cold so the glue dries quickly. And we're just going to line up that mesh right to the very top edge of the jar as close as you can get it. If you have like a craft stick or some of those little finger protectors to help you um, get this on the jar, that would be a lot easier. I'm just using this dotting tool from the Dollar Tree. So as you can see, I'm just working in real small sections all the way around the jar. Don't worry about that little gap around the neck of the jar. We're going to fix that here in just a minute. The main thing you want to do is just make sure that you're getting it on nice and straight so that the mesh lines up as straight as you can get it. So now we're going to take a rubber band and we're going to stick that around the neck of the jar. And that's going to help with that gapping that we had around the top portion. And we're going to leave that on we're not going to see it later but i am going to add some extra hot glue around the top of the jar here um, and a few more spots just to make sure it stays on nice now the only other glue we're going to use for the body portion of the jar is just to glue these two seams together and as you can see it was a little bit too large i can cut off the excess now once i have it lined up and if you need to straighten it out a little bit you can lift up that rubber band and pull some of that mesh up a little bit to help keep it straight so line these two portions up as best you can add some more hot glue and then glue those seams together once that glue has dried you're going to flip the jar upside down and again working in small sections you're just going to add some hot glue to the bottom of the jar and just keep pushing this mesh down to the jar now um, as you can see it folds a little bit making almost like a pleat that's what you want so you want to work in real small sections so you can get this bottom nice and tight to the um, bottom of the jar itself those little pleats help to make it nice and straight and don't worry about what the bottom of the jar looks like right now we're going to fix that soon so now that we have this all glued on we're going to take the um, ring that goes on the top of the jar we're just going to trace this on the faux leather and this is going to be for the bottom portion of the jar to help clean it up a little bit we're just going to cut that out now we're going to take the rest of that faux leather and our roller and we're going to line the roller up on the bottom edge there and we're not really using the roller to measure anything we're just using it as a straight edge and we're going to use just the width of the roller to create these um, strips of fabric that are going to go on the sides of the jar and you'll see me draw two strips of fabric here i ended up going back and drawing one more because later on i decided to add some of this blue um, faux leather to the bottom of the jar also so we just line up our edges here and fold it in half and then we'll cut um, the strip of fabric off together and then we'll take this strip of fabric and we'll fold it in half and then fold it in half one more time 
making sure it's nice and straight, and that'll help us get a nice straight line when we cut the second uh, strip here. So now we're gonna make sure that when we glue this on that we find first the center, and I'm just going to mark that with my marker by folding it in half. So I glue that to the center of the jar and I'm making sure I'm covering up that seam along the side of the jar where we glued the two ends together. I just start attaching it with your hot glue. Now I glue this blue circle on now, but I ended up going back later and adding some more blue um, leather to the bottom of the jar. So I recommend if you're adding that extra blue strip of uh, faux leather to the bottom of the jar to hold off gluing that blue circle on until the very end so that you cover up all the raw edges. I went back and decided to do it later, so I kind of had to do it twice, as you'll see here in just a minute. So now we're just going to work up the sides of the jar, just working in small sections, and pull on the leather when you are sticking it to the side just a little bit to help get it nice and straight and taut to the jar and it helps just make it look a lot straighter and nice and neat when you attach it. And you're going to cut off the excess at the top. It doesn't have to be super straight as we're going to cover it. Now taking that second strip of fabric, we're just going to attach that to the neck of the jar. This was the perfect width. I didn't have to cut it down or anything. So the um, width of the roller was the right size here to get all the way around the jar. And I don't cut any of the excess off. I just keep wrapping it and layering it until I have um, this whole entire strip completely attached to the top of the jar. So here's what it looks like so far. Now we're going to take some of this nautical twine that they've been selling at Dollar Tree recently I'm going to wrap that around the jar a few times at the top and then just tie it in a knot, then cut off the excess and I don't add any glue or anything. This is just how I attached it. So now I'm going to take these metal brads and I'm going to open them up so the prongs are all the way open and then just take some scissors and I'm going to cut the prongs off. These will help us to have like a faux kind of like nail or tack um, to add to the jar. So I'm going to add one right above the nautical rope or twine kind of in the center of that uh, fabric strip and then one right below. And I do the same thing to the opposite side. So I didn't like that I could see the hot glue through the neck of the jar. So I'm adding some dark blue paint on the inside portion of the jar just to cover it up so we won't be able to see like the raw edge of the mesh and the glue. And then I painted the top edge of the jar also. Just kind of help blend it all in together. So here's where I decided to add that extra strip of fabric to the bottom. I just follow the line of the mesh to keep it nice and straight. And then just like I did earlier where I turn the jar upside down and then tuck the mesh in so that it's on the bottom of the jar. I did the same with the faux leather here. And then I cut another blue circle and glued that to the very bottom of the jar once I had everything glued down um, just to make it look nice and neat. So again, I would hold off on gluing that circle down until you have all the pieces um, glued down to the bottom and you're ready to finish off the edges. Then I added a few more brads to the bottom just to kind of tie it all in together. And I did the same on the opposite side. And now we get to decorate our jar. So you can fill it with some sand. I did it about a little bit more than a third of the way. And then I filled it with some seashells and some little like nautical pieces. I kind of just arranged them in the jar. And then you can, if you like, glue in this little glass photo of Dollar Tree sells them in like a three or a four pack. You can glue that in and then put your candle in the top of the jar. So that's one option. If you like, you could just go ahead and put the candle right inside the jar with some shells and sand. It's really up to you which way you would prefer. And then you can decorate it with some of these wood beads from Dollar Tree. I put it on a little wood slice I picked up from Hobby Lobby and added some more shells and sand dollars around it. Um, just to make this really cute nautical lanterns. I really like this a lot. And then I just kind of added some extra pieces around it. 
Um, I even put it on these little shelves that I made last week that um, was in the video. So you guys might want to check that out as well. So then project number two, we're going to make this picture, which was so fun. I just love this project so much. So the supplies we're going to need is just a stretch canvas picture from Dollar Tree. We're going to use some more of that um, rug underlayment. We'll use some large craft sticks, some pebbles from um, over by like where the marbles are at. We'll need a canvas board. We'll need another ruler and we'll need the hot glue again. Also some greenery of your choice, some um, twine, and then we'll need some cardstock. I'm also going to use this dotting tool from Dollar Tree. So let's get crafty. So the first thing we're going to do is take this um, canvas picture and we're going to start pulling out the staples um, and then removing that canvas now you can keep the canvas you can use it in another project if you like if you like the picture or you can just toss it it's really up to you I actually used mine to pour paint on while I was doing the project now we're going to take that 8x10 canvas board and we're going to lay it underneath of our frame and we're going to just mark it along the edge where it's a little bit too big, and then we're going to trim it with the razor blade. Now, if you get the right size canvas board, then you won't have to cut um, this down if the frame and the canvas board are the same size. Mine were different sizes, which is why I had to trim my board. I'm just um, cleaning up the edges a little bit with some scissors. So now I'm going to paint the frame. It actually took two coats of white chalk paint to cover it completely. And I painted the top, the bottom, and the outside edge, and the inside edge. I did not paint the back. You can if you want to. This is optional. And you don't even have to paint it if you don't want to. I just chose to paint mine. So once we have the second coat on, we're going to let that dry. So let's make the fence. We're going to take these large craft sticks. I have a paper cutter, so I'm just going to cut mine in the paper cutter. But you could do this with a pair of scissors. It's very easy. So we're just going to cut the edges kind of at an angle to look like different um, angled posts. And we did them at a whole bunch of different lengths. And I did maybe like five or six pieces. And I cut them at different angles. So it just kind of looked like an old fence. So then we're going to line them up once we have them all cut. And we're going to take another piece and glue that to the back to hold them all together. Now we're going to paint them. So first I'm going to take some gray paint and I'm just gonna brush it on pretty much with a dry brush. I don't completely cover it. I just uh, paint it on so it's mostly covered as you can see here. So once I have the dark gray paint on, I'm going to go back over it with some white paint. And again, it's almost like a dry brush. I have just a very small amount of paint on it i did not wait for the gray paint to dry i wanted it to kind of blend together to look like old weathered posts once i have the white on i'm going to change gears here a little bit and use some antiquing wax i'm going to brush just a little bit on And I try to make it a little bit darker between each post um, just to help it uh, separate each one a little bit. And then I paint the tops and the side edges with that antiquing wax also. Then I went back in one more time with a little tiny bit of white paint and I just kind of smeared it with my finger. Now I'm going to add some twine to the very bottom portion here. And then I put a little dot of glue where each section separates there, where they kind of got stuck together. And I just put a little dot of glue that just kind of helped. So I didn't have a straight line of glue all the way up across. It kind of made it look more rounded and 3D like. Then I glue it to the opposite side in the back and cut off the excess. And now the top portion's a little bit different. We're going to wrap it around the post. And so as you can see, I just kind of like push on the um, craft stick a little bit to separate it and then I wrap it around it. It's kind of like fitting, fitting dental floss through your teeth, if that makes sense. You just kind of want to squeeze it between those two little posts there. 
and try to keep it as straight as you can all the way across so they're about the same level on each post. So actually when you glue this together initially with the stick on the back, if you leave just a tiniest bit of space, it will help you get the twine between each post to wrap it. Once I have it all wrapped, I'm just going to cut off the excess and put one more little dot of glue on the back to make sure that it stays down. And here's what our posts look like. So now we're going to take some of that rug underlayment and we're going to make it look kind of like a fishing net that got stuck on the post. So I'm just going to glue this at an angle, just in a few spots, and then I wrap it around the back of the post. And then I cut off some excess and then just keep wrapping it around to the back. So here's our little fishing net on the side. So now we're going to take some cardstock and we're just going to rip it. This is going to be used to do our waves and our clouds on our canvas board. So there's really no rhyme or reason how you tear it. You just want to tear it so you have like these little kind of like wave looks to it. So on the canvas, I put dots of paint to represent the sand, the water, and the sky. So I used light tan, and that was from Walmart from Dollar Tree. I used the color sand, aqua, and sky. So I'm just going to add a little bit of the tan at the bottom. That was from uh, Walmart. And then I'm going to add a dot of the aqua. That's going to help with like the water. And then I added a little bit of yellow down by where the sand was at in the water. Then right where the skyline would be. And then at the top, I did the blue and a little bit in the middle there. So now we're going to take the sponge from Dollar Tree and we're going to dampen it just slightly before um, we start smearing the paint. So we're going to do just the sand and the water first. And we're just kind of going back and forth. You don't want to drag it down across the sand because it will end up turning green. So if you need to go over it, just kind of flip your sponge over, but you're just going to drag the um, paint across the canvas board. So then we're going to rinse the sponge once you have the sand and water smeared across the bottom portion of your canvas. And then you're gonna squeeze out as much water as you can from the sponge. Now it's still a little bit damp, which is what you want. And we're going to drag that yellow across and then work our way up into the blue. Again, you don't wanna drag it down too much the yellow and blue will kind of turn a greenish color if you do too much blending, but you just want to have a nice damp sponge and just drag that paint across the canvas. So then you want to clean your sponge one more time and allow the canvas to dry for about five minutes. And then we're going to add our clouds and waves. And we're going to do this with some white paint. So we're just going to take that piece of cardstock and then dip our sponge in a little bit of white paint and kind of dab it so it's, you know, just a small amount of paint on your sponge and then you're just going to use that raw edge of the cardstock to create these little um, foam waves at um, the shoreline and then in the water. And I just kind of put a little bit of white where I thought it needed it and just kind of tried to move the paper around and just do little portions at a time. So less is more. You can always go back and add more. If you mess up, you can just paint over it. So here's what I have so far. And then I'm going to do the top. I'm going to make them look like clouds. I'm using the same piece of paper. Once I um, do it with the paper turned one way, I end up turning it around just so I got some different variations in the way the clouds looked. I didn't want them to all look real uniform. I want them to look a little bit different. So for the clouds, I then added a little bit of pink paint to the white to help it look kind of like a sunset. I wanted it to blend in with the yellow paint behind it and give that really pretty glow. So I didn't clean the white paint off. I just added a small amount of pink to the sponge. I 
I took a little bit darker pink and added a few more um, clouds in the background. And then if it was a little bit too dark, I just dabbed it out with the sponge a little bit to help blend it in. And again, the sponge is still damp. And I'm going to add a little bit of the pink glow to the water. I did a little bit too much. I went back in and fixed it later. I just smudged it out with my finger for now. And I'm adding a little bit of blue paint back in because I thought I put a little bit too much pink there. And then I went back in with the cardstock and added a little bit more white since I had too much of the pink and kind of had to fix it. So again, like I said, you could always just paint over it and just add more once you fix it. So don't panic if you think you added like too much of one color. I just went in and just kept adding to it. And then if I didn't like it, I just covered it up and started over. So now I kind of drew um, where my palm tree is going to go. And then I take some bright orange paint and add just a little dot right in the middle to represent the sun. I just used my finger and then I used a damp brush to blend out the paint into the water. Now I'm taking some blue paint and going back in and just adding a little bit um, to where the glow on the water was and it kind of helped add a little bit darker blue to the background so you have a nice crisp um, horizon line. Then I added a little bit more blue underneath some of the white foamy waves. And now I'm taking some black paint and I'm watering it down with just a spray bottle with some water in it. And um, it just seems to help the paint to spread a little bit better when you're painting these trees and it just gives a nicer, more crisp line. So I'm just painting a palm tree here and I did draw it with my pencil first the way I wanted the trunk of the tree to look. And I want to say I used about a tablespoon of black chalk paint and then I sprayed just with a water bottle um, from Dollar Tree. I sprayed probably about four sprays of water into the paint to water it down. And that seemed to be the perfect consistency. So now I'm just going to draw where the um, leaves are going to come off from the palm tree with my pencil. And then I'll go in and I'll do like the center portion of each leaf. And then when you're painting um, the larger portions of the leaves, you want to start from that center line and work your way out. And then, of course, they're wider right at the center of the tree and they get a little bit thinner as you work your way out towards the edge. As you can see, I'm just doing little straight lines and I just kind of make real quick movements and I don't really worry about them being super uniform. I'm just making sure that they're wider in the middle of the tree and get a little bit thinner as you go out away from the tree. When you're painting these, you want to be mindful of like the way that the um, leaves would kind of lay. Like if they're bent and they're up more towards the top of the tree, then the opposite side of the branch there, you wouldn't see the palm as much. So I made those strokes just a little bit shorter. I'm not a master of painter. I was just kind of making this up as I went along and I was very happy. It turned out fairly well for my first try. Usually I'm not that lucky. <laughs> so that's our palm tree all finished. And now we're going to add just a little bit more dark blue. This is pretty much a dry brush. I just dipped it in a darker blue and I'm doing like little circular patterns just in a few spots to help it not look so flat. I wanted it to look a little bit more detailed. And I don't really know where the dark lines should go. I just kind of put them where I felt that they needed to be. I definitely did not study painting, so I don't know exactly if I did it right or not. So now we're going to take a craft stick and we're going to draw, to draw pretty much like an oval shape 
at the bottom and these are going to become birds. So I'm just going to cut those with my scissors. And then I use the first one that I made as a stencil. And I'm just going to trace around it on the opposite end of the craft stick. And if you want to make it a little bit smaller so they're different sizes, then just kind of draw underneath of it following that shape to make it a little bit smaller. And again, you can also make them larger this way. I'm just going to trim it with my scissors and I ended up making three of them three different sizes. So now I'm going to paint them white and set them aside to dry while I assemble the frame. Make sure you paint the edges as well because you will be able to see them. This is a really nice fun 3D effect for this picture. Okay, so while those are drying, I'm just going to add some hot glue around the edge of the canvas board. And then I'm going to take that frame and just stick it right on top. I just make sure it's nice and lined up on the back. And now I decide where I want my fencing to be and I want it in the corner. So I add some hot glue and attach that to the corner. Then I take my uh, seagull bodies and I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue and glue those so that they're going to be standing on these little fence posts. I'm just going to start with two. And now taking these pebbles from Dollar Tree, I found a few that were like um, triangle shape and those will be the beaks for the birds and they're going to be facing each other. So I'm just attaching this with some hot glue. And then I have another rock that I thought looked like a wing and I glued that further down on the body in a lighter gray color. Then I took a dotting tool and some black paint and I'm just going to put a little dot for the eye. Now you could use either a paintbrush or a marker. It's really up to you. I had a Sharpie, so I'm just going to draw the legs to the birds with the Sharpie marker. And they're just two very narrow straight lines with kind of like a little triangle at the bottom for the feet. Here's what they look like up close. So then I had some more of those little rocks and I drew on them with the Sharpie to make them look like seashells. So I drew two of them to look like the pointy style seashell that you see. And then I took a round white one and I drew some little dots on it to make it look like a sand dollar. So here's the little one that I made into a sand dollar. So then I had some greenery and I just cut a few leaves off and I'm going to glue uh, that to the bottom right at the base of the palm tree. And then I'm going to take some hot glue and more of those pebbles and just start filling in this bottom edge of the picture frame to make a rocky shoreline. And I go all the way across and I take a few more small little leaves and I just kind of poke them in to look like you have weeds growing up through the rocks. I tuck a few pieces under the fence and then I add more of the tiny pebbles on top of those and then add a few more little leaves around that also. Then I decided to go ahead and use that third sequel that I made earlier and I'm going to glue him to the frame. And I put the wing on. I'm going to add his little beak here and then the dot for the eye. And then I'm also going to draw the legs on and then add a few little greenery pieces to the corner near where he's standing. So once that was all done, I also took that blue and white twine and I just glued that to the outside edge of the frame. So here's some close-up shots of what this picture looks like. This was so fun to make. I just had the most 
enjoyable time making it. So my mind just kind of shut down and it was fun to just relax and kind of forget about a lot of things I have going on right now. <laughs> so project number three, we are going to make this project, which is super simple. Anybody can make this. So the supplies you're going to need will be one of the starfish from Dollar Tree. They come in a three pack. We just started to sell these. Also some nautical rope. We're going to need some paint. And you'll need some hot glue. Some um, antiquing wax if you have it. You can use a few different colors of paint. So I'm going to use like a teal, sky blue, yellow. And I'm also going to need some paint brushes, some scissors. And some more craft sticks. Then we're going to need a small frame of your choice, whichever you can find from Dollar Tree. So let's get crafty. So I had this um, dark black frame with these beads at the top for a hanger. I've had this for quite some time. So I decided to go ahead and use this frame to create this picture because I wanted it to look like a kind of like a shadow box effect. So I just took the backing off and I tossed that aside. I'm going to pull these little prongs out because we won't need those. And then I painted the frame using some white chalk paint. It did take two coats of paint to completely cover it. And I did let it dry between coats. This one was a little bit difficult to cover. Even with chalk paint, it was still a little bit see-through after two coats of paint. I think it was the texture of the frame. I probably should have sanded it first. So once that's dry, I'm going to take the craft sticks on the back. And I'm just going to measure where that little ledge was at, where the... Um, other picture was kind of set into the frame and once I mark that with a pencil I'm just going to cut um, the wood pieces down again I'm using my paper cutter but you can just use scissors and make sure it fits if it does use that as your template to mark your other craft sticks and you'll need to do enough to get all the way across the back of the picture so it took about eight craft sticks I did two in this really pretty aqua blue color from Dollar Tree over in the shore living section. And then I painted two with the sand yellow. And I did two in the um, sky blue and I did two in a like soft tan color. Once those were dry, we're just going to add some hot glue to the back of the frame and start gluing these pieces in alternating colors as you work your way across. Once you have these glued in, if you want, you can take another craft stick and just glue it across the back as an extra support. I didn't think it was necessary, so I didn't do that, but you can add that to the back if you think you'll need some extra support across the back. And I did not put a hanger on this, but you can add a hanger to it as well. It's not just using a dry brush with some white paint. We're just going to go across the top um, to weather this a little bit. Then I used a little bit of water to kind of water it down. I wiped it off with a paper towel. And then I took some antiquing wax and went over top of it as well. And then wiped that off with a paper towel again. Just to kind of weather this a little bit. It's really optional if you want to do that. Then I'm just going to take some hot glue and start gluing this nautical rope into the corner and the inside edge. That's why I like this frame because it's got a really nice kind of um, deep set frame here to make it look more like a shadow box. So you just want to glue that all the way around the four sides and then cut off the excess. And then all you're going to do is take your uh, little star here and add some glue to the back and glue it on. And that's it, super simple. So these were a lot of fun to make. So we've got this little picture here. Again, our nautical lantern and our seaside picture. I had so much fun making these. I hope you guys enjoyed them. I really do appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Come back tomorrow to see our Dollar Tree video. Have a great day, everyone.